fourth idols today, Nashville, Tennessee, at the Cannery Ballroom. Lee, Tech Gavin, let's talk gear. And uh, the callousness of what you care for your guitars is quite endearing to me. So <laughs> talk to me about this guitar and how it's, why it's so special to you. Um, I don't think it's callousness. I think it's actually a lot of care. Like I just do what I want with it <laughs> because I, I love it so much. That I, I always feel like, you know, playing it however I want or hitting it against something or, or you know, like just smashing the mic against it or something is all a part of it. And, you know, it's, it's made of wood. You break it, you just glue it back together. Now, where does the skateboarding on the guitar fall into the category? I don't know, that was just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think, yeah, that, that wasn't actually anything for anything musical. I think it's more to look at Gavin while I'm doing it. Yeah, Nick, you see this exact face. <laughs> it, it shouldn't <laughs> fall in any category. That's what Fender has to put up with when they send you a guitar or you buy a guitar from them. Uh, they, they have to be tested and uh, yeah. you put it through the ringer. I mean, this has been going now for like, Oh, like six years? It was before you yeah, were with before us. Before me, yeah. It's um, happened and, too. I mean, I, I've glued the neck back together, the body. Uh, there's splits down the body down here. There's half the. I always remove. Um, the, you got the one now, but it's pretty yeah, loose. That's, that's yeah, that's loose. Gavin For a actually. Reason, he, you need to show them why. <laughs> oh, it's so I can do this. Uh, I always tighten it up just to make sure everybody knows. I just love yeah. the noises that come out of your guitars. This is, when we get to the pedal board, you're gonna reveal a lot of your tricks of the trade. But before we get there, are you wiring these straight to the to the pickup? I know that obviously this only has one pickup, but uh, are you doing that with like straight to the volume? Uh, yeah, with, with, this, with this and pretty much all of my other guitars. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, volume pickup, that's it. Nothing okay. else, and it's always bridge. And pickups, have you swapped those out? At yeah, this, this was actually made uh, for me by a friend of mine from Bristol called uh, Steve Hawker. Um, I told him what I wanted, which was basically all bass, all treble, uh -huh. and he just did it. So, I mean, it's... Didn't you say it was a, his first ever pickup? Yeah, it was his first ever pickup. <laughs> 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 and it's very aggressive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes it sounds really, really bad. It's really microphonic as yeah. well. It's, it's great to work with. It's <laughs> a pleasure. Gavin, I, I can sense the sarcasm, my no, friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're all like that. So like, you know, I've got this one here as well. This is my Strat. Again, it's uh, the same deal. It's, it's, I wanted something with a floating bridge, so I could do loads of. Like I'm obsessed with the 80s, so I, I wanted to be able to dive bomb. Yeah, you, you told know. us off camera you're a huge fan of yeah. Def Leppard. Oh, I am a massive Def Leppard fan. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> it's never so struck me. I, I, I absolutely love them. But yeah, I always, I always wanted to be able to dive bomb. So in Danny and Adelco, whenever we play it live, I use this and just go mad with it. Yeah. You know? And you and Mark use, speaking of <laughs> guitar and stuff that goes on it, is, uh, you guys use huge strings, don't you? You use like yeah. 12s. 12 to 56. Yep. Damn. Yeah. And is that because, so like you did in the intro there, and I know you do stuff like Mr. Motivator and different parts where you, you elicit such sounds that don't, are, aren't associated with the guitar, is a lot of a way you bend notes in and out of the, the noises that you're creating with your pedals. Is that why you have such huge strings? To, uh, so it's, you, you're really fighting with it? I don't know, really. Like I, always, I used to use 10 to 52. Uh -huh. um, and that was because when I was younger, I, I saw that, like Tom DeLong used 10 to 52, and he used to hit his guitar quite hard down strokes. And I thought, well, that, that makes sense. You can get more out of uh, your power chords or, yeah. or whatever. And then as we were going in the band, it was like, oh, you know, maybe they should get heavier. And then Bones, like, why don't you get 11s? And then, then he got 12s. So he was like, you should get 12s. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right. And now like, we're just yeah. on now 12s. Now he's at the maximum, but when uses mammoth. So yeah, I saw 60, that. Yeah, 64 to 12. <laughs> I don't think to standard. Jeez. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think a wooden neck could take that. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Now, how are you choosing what guitars to use uh, based on the song? You know, the, your guys' set list. Is it is it this stays with you until it becomes destroyed or out of tune, and you move on, or is it song specific? Uh, well, I mean. It used to be my telly. I'm a telly player. Yeah. A, like it's telly always a telly. Knuckles. But um, Teen from the band Gustav smashed it up the other day. So um, I don't have that anymore. It's completely gone. Uh, like, what, where, what venue? 
Um, House of Blues, Boston. There we go. So some Hooligans. lucky people in House of Blues has got yeah. several pieces yeah, of my guitar. Pink matchsticks. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, but we did. Didn't, we did save some, didn't we, Gab? Yeah. Wherever it is. Here, so, they'll be back. Um, so gen generally, I've always got my main Telecaster, which again is a single coil, and they were bare, this bare knuckle okay. pickups, um, straight to volume. That's that. And it's like my workhorse. It does everything, it does basically all the songs up until um, our new album, Crawler, when that's, that's everything. Got you. Oh, well, we got that. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> where's, the, uh, where's the other guitar? Oh, yeah, Was that a loner from Fender? Because I, I don't know if you're going to get in trouble or hot water, but I remember you told us off camera that. Uh, Fender first gave you a guitar when you guys uh, had uh, that, equipment stolen, so and you're like, this. "It's a loner," and you're like, "Yeah, you're not gonna, you're not gonna want yeah. this back." Yeah, no, yeah, they offered us loners, but I, like, I, it's not gonna stay unscratched. Nope. Yeah. So this is what um, this whole bass plate yeah. was all that survived. So we just took it out of it and then just stuck it into this guitar, <laughs> and it's set up the exact same yeah. as your old guitar. Exactly. So it's just ready to go. Yeah. Well, for now, we'll yeah. see. Tell it. It's got a new lease on life for now. Now, uh, so we, yeah, go ahead. Do you want to go to Yeah, that? yeah, tell me about this one. You uh, said this was used on Crawler? Yeah, so uh, the thing about this one is it's, it got sent over. It's the new Pro 2. Um, Did it come with the knob, or is that you're doing? God, they just fall off, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. They, they, they never so stay on, these. So yeah, that's gone. But um, <laughs> everything else is kept, as you can see. I've kept all the stuff in it. It's also all stock, okay. which normally I, I don't do. I usually change everything out. But everything sounded great. And as soon as I got it, um, I plugged it in. I started messing around with this. I turned the, the, the tone off and put it on the neck pickup. And I started playing this line. And Joe was like, well, that sounds, what is that? Like, what is that? Is that something? And I was like, no, I'm just, just trying the guitar. He's like, that's weird. Like, I really wanted to write a, a reverb song. And uh, that was it. Like, that, was, that was how uh, When the Lights Come On okay. off the new album just, just happened. So this guitar ended up, within like seconds of its life, ended up helping write a song. So it's staying as it is. I'm not going to change it. It's already paying dividends. That's, exactly. That's cool. And uh, Gavin's helped me out here by... Uh, yeah, put a little bit of rubber underneath because yeah. he kept turning the, vault, the tone knob down. So <laughs> well, I don't have them. So every time I went to play a song, it was, it was off. <laughs> so now it doesn't go off, ever. Nice. But yeah, it's a really good guitar. It's, it's probably one of my favorite, probably one of my favorite Fenders that have been released in, in a long, long time. These. Now, I'll ask because we were, before filming, we had some noise issues that we were kind of sussed out by bringing your volume down, which is still quite loud. Yeah. Is why not humbuckers for you? Voice use single coils is that like spanky, you know, nature you get of it. Like, I love Telecasters, I love the sound of, of Telecaster bridge pickups. Um, and it's just what I, I always use. And it, like, even before that, I think my first guitar was a Fender Cyclone, the first guitar I ever bought was a Fender Cyclone, which had a single coil Mustang, single coil, ev everything single coil. Yeah, actually, I had one. Um, I had the Tom DeLong when I was younger. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I had the, the one with the Seymour Duncan Invader 8s. Yeah. The H big, the big screws in yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. It's just a bit too chunky. Yeah. Well, if that's it for guitars. I think we should move on to amps. Okay. And uh, you've got two Marshalls here. How are you using these? Are they both run at the same time or? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Always on. Okay. And like I said before, you, you turn down for the noise issues, but you normally pretty a lot of high headroom for you, and then you do all yeah. the filth with the uh, pedals. Yeah, so they're both 100 watts um, to get as much headroom as possible. Uh, this, like, so I had uh, 800, I think the, like, you know, like going back in the day, I had a Marshall Valve Estate. You know, like that was the amp that I could afford, that was yeah. what I had. I, I loved it, but it didn't, you know, it was really muddy and mushy. And I, I found a JCM 800, I think it was a 1989, which was this one. one of these, yeah, the, du the dual channel. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Like, I absolutely fell in love with it. I had a 2x12, a combo, um, and 800's kind of stuck with me ever since. I mean, in the UK, we use SLP and uh, 1987X, uh, two heads, 
two two by twelves. Different speaker combinations. That's Get right. Fins um, and swamp things in there yeah. at the moment. Yeah, so. eminent swamp thang, 12 inch in one side, fane, cream backs, 12 inch on the other side. And that's for your UK setup or this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what's going on here? These Same? are fanes, okay. both, both cream back fanes from high watt. Yep. Because high, it's high watt who usually use the fanes. Yeah. Yep. And I heard Bowens and I was like, oh, like, I, like, I really love the warmth that you get out of those, out of the fanes. And it works for these as well. Now, I'll ask you before before we go to the pedals here is, you know, thankfully, because I am a fan, you guys have found some success and now you're able to buy gear where I'm sure before when you guys were, you know, years ago, we're having to just use literally a valve state and anything you could, you know, had six strings on it. Are you enjoying the fact that you're able to have access to not only companies, but to, uh, to try all this gear? Yes, yeah, it's, it's insane. Changes the direction of the band almost. It's, it's amazing. However, I, I haven't really moved away from Marshall. Yeah. I, I did have, um, I had Supro Royal Reverb. Uh, that was an amazing amp and they were, they were really kind to, to sort me out with one of those. Uh, and then the, the problem is it just didn't have an, enough headroom yeah. again. Uh, this Fender, I've given us some twins as well, which we, we toured for quite some time, but now we're not really using the twins because we are wherever yeah, it is, DI's there's a back, DI's yeah. back, so running DI signals. So we don't need, because the twins were always the chop. Yeah. So if everything here was like heavy and hard, the Fender twin could help cut through everything, but now the DI yeah, can do that. too loud. It was very loud. Yeah, you weren't in the PA. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, before I, I just thought of this, is how are you running these? Are they kind of EQ'd the same, or is one doing one task and the other is kind of filling a different sonic space? Well, the the main idea when it's uh, SLP and, and 987X is one will take a bit more bass and the okay. other one will take drive a bit more because these are two 800s, and we actually asked for two of these, but they sent this instead, which is actually a Fortunate mm -hmm. thing because I I love yeah, them. And one of your favorite amps. Exactly. Yeah. So it's um they're not actually as easy to get hold of. So I don't know where it came from, but we can run this one a little hotter. Okay. And it's actually a bit warmer. Yeah. Absolutely. So it that's become a bit more like treble and bassy sort of vibe, and this is more of a mid sweet mid spot. amp. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's it really. It's just fairly simple. Nothing special. Both on at the same time pedals send everything to the amps. Well, uh, I think it's time to talk pedals, Lee. Gavin, let's yeah, do it. Yeah, that's cool. Right. <laughs> Gentlemen, we're looking at something here. This is your doing, Lee. Gavin, yep. I heard this is your handiwork yeah, as well. Indeed, yeah. Let's either invigorate the audience or frustrate the audience. There's a lot of pedals, boys. Yeah, I think it's confusion, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's his fault. Yeah, it's my fault. <laughs> now, the, the whole purpose of this board was, um, I mean, the original one was about that big okay yeah um and then i got loads of pedals for for writing purposes uh, for the new album and you know i didn't i didn't know what was going to work or what wasn't also i had some of my old pedals and i wanted to keep them so gavin was like yeah we'll build two boards and split them into two and push them up against each other <laughs> so yeah we've got two boards but now, it's ridiculous yeah, it is. And, and let's get into the, some of that ridiculousness is that fact that you are so like creative in the way that you expand the guitar's vocabulary, you know, not just typical sounds and playing is the use of the pedals I want to get into, like a song like War or the new record uh, Car Crash. There's a lot of like noises that are going on. And I'm sure a lot of that comes through these pedals, like the Data Corruptor isn't a pedal that you know, a blues rocker or like Eric Clapton's going to use, you use it in its most pure sense. It's corrupting your signal. Yeah, I mean, well, the, the data corruptor is actually only used on one song, which is, uh, out two songs, which is No Fighting Man With A Poem on the second verse. It just does this like, little dance like that. Wow. <laughs> um, and then I roll off the volume. Do you want me to do it? Yeah, so absolutely, just, yeah. Uh, so it's just... I would love for you to show off. the audience how you so it's just a, a data corruptor with a bit of gain and then um, some reverb and it's just... And that's 
that's it, really. Just I, like I that. Don't, it's just, I don't think it's, it's just a horrendous noise, isn't it, with yeah. a tail? And I, I think it, it just sounds really cool. Uh, and again, it's used in a very similar way for uh, a cover that we did, which is on the same album, on Joy. Oh my God, what is it called? Cry to me. Got it. <laughs> Still in the band. Yeah. Memory. <laughs> um, and it's used in, the, in a very similar way. I, I don't really know how far this pedal goes. I, I, I have a lot of, uh, I have a problem with pedals where if they do too much, I get really confused. And I, I'm like, I, I don't know what to do with this anymore. Like it just, as soon as I, if I find something that works, I'm just, I'm there, I'm like, cool, that's, that does that. So at the moment that does that. I've what tried about the it. evil filter, because that probably does. Yeah, the evil filter has been used in quite a lot, actually. Um, I don't use the fuzz section so much, okay. but I use the filter section, the fil filter side with the expression pedal. Um, and it, it, I get, it's, ju it's just for filter sweeping. Okay. However, the, the expression pedal is also joint to the ring mod, which we use on our new album on a song called Car Crash, yeah. which we've been playing on this tour. Can we hear how you use that? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, guitar. Uh, yes, please. I mean, this, this guitar also has uh, really bad intonation. It's in standard as well. So, <laughs> not when it's, it's not Gavin's fault. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> uh, it should be known that Lee loves guitar stands uh, by the floor. Yeah. So he, yeah, this is I mean, how he typically likes his guitars. By the look of it as well. But it, it, it's fine. They're, they're, <laughs> they'll be all right. Uh, okay. Car so, crash, ring mod. Car crash. Turn all this down. So I'm doing the EQ. So, it's the ring mod noise when you turn it on. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Like a little submarine. <laughs> yeah, it's like an elevator. <laughs> yeah, it's a submarine. <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, it's a... I do this kind of hip-hop line throughout the verse, which is just... And then on the bridge, we all come together, and we pull this in, a bit of gain, and then it's... Uh... That's it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it just it just felt a sweep up for the for the ring mod. Now I'm just uh, I'm sorry for doing jumping back to the guitar, but you you play uh, wireless because you go out of the crowd. No, no, no. no. We, we giant use cable. cable. Yeah. So Gavin, you're, you're yeah. Gavin, you're chasing him in the uh, crowd. No, but well, the reason he's on a cable is so we know where he is, so <laughs> you can find him and then give him a yank back. Also, it's so we can uh, give our sound engineer massive signal loss. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's you know, 30 meters of cable before the pedal board. And then, so I, when I run out to the other end of the room, we have loads of signal loss, but then Gavin pulls the cable back and we get the signal yeah, back. All the signal so comes back from the All crowd. the signals on the stage now. <laughs> We're getting the pierce. I'm pierce pretty of lead. sure. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Yeah, that's exactly it's how it works. Everybody, that's everybody, exactly that's how it works. science. Don't even go to school. No. Nope. No. Nope. That is science. All right, back to the pedals, guys. Uh, where should we start now? feel like there's so much to go I mean, through. The stamens at the start. Stamen. Oh, I mean, yeah, the stamen is a lot of fun. I mean, like, so I guess there, there really is loads of normal pedals here. So I'll just point out, you know, there's a, there's a few drives in this section here. Um, so there's a, the tone job at EQ, which is a boost, the arrows, which is a boost, boost. both from um, Earthquaker and then the gray channel, which is basically like two DODs, yeah. you know, the I don't, I don't remember what the yellow DOD is called. Nope. But e e everyone knows that what that is, I, I think. I, I, it's funny how we know me. pedals by colors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like I know. It becomes synonymous with it. But it's a famous overdrive, and I think it's yeah. basically two of those side by side. Um, and then there's this jam uh, light bulb. Again, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm calling it the light bulb. <laughs> it's, de it's definitely not called the light bulb. But it's got a light bulb on it, so there we go. And I think it's like a tube screamer type yeah, clone. Yeah, it, it's exactly drive. that. It okay. is. It's an emulation of a of a tube screamer. So these are used for gain stacking. Okay. 
and, and kind of that's that. Uh, I use the EQ pedal a lot live because uh, rooms change. You, you kind of have to adapt. Yeah, it's, it happens a lot. This is one of my most favorite pedals, the Interstellar Overdriver, which is a, it's basically a dual, it's a dual overdrive, but it's really fun. It goes to fuzz. So if you, if you pack it right out, you just got pure gain. And that's what I was using on the feedback noises I was making earlier. Uh, it's both on with these three on as well. So yeah, there, I was going to ask, at some point, do you stack them or run them into each other? And yeah, all the that? time. Okay. It's like... I mean, they're always on pretty much, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the time, yeah, and then it's just a bit of tweaking. The tone job gets moved a lot. Um, but yeah, all this is going soon. It's all going to get compacted into a uh, switching system. It's all going to be much more manageable. You gave up, huh? Yeah, I mean, the You're done thing, tap dancing? <laughs> honestly, there's, uh, in Mr. Motivate, I actually have to go from the yeah. organizer to the uh, Strymon Flint within one, one step, which is the full length of the board, and it's just not right. I mean, it's lit. I mean, it's, it's like a Pete Townsend jump. It's full, full yeah. width. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so there, there's the normal stuff. And then there's um, the stuff like Drolo. Yeah, I'm not familiar he, with that pedal. What's that? So that? It's a guy from Belgium. Um, he makes, he, he, he just makes like kind of weird pedals, really. It, this one's amazing. And it's a, I've got it in one song, which was on Ultra Mono, uh, on The Lover. And it's in the background where like, I'm doing this. <laughs> But in the background, it's doing this. Which is just amazing. <laughs> I mean, uh, other than that, it's, I don't really know how to use it. Again, it's one of those pedals where like, it does so much that you kind of get lost. There is some amazing um, sw uh, padded noises. <laughs> Classify this as like a free sampler, yeah. but with the added bits, added madness. <laughs> um, but I only ever use it on the the the, the moment latch. Okay. The momentary latch. Yeah. That's what it is. ML. So this is the new version. You can actually plug an expression pedal into it and, and mess around with it like that. But I actually like using them both together. So it makes more sense to leave it. He also does the Twin Peaks, which is a tremolo. Okay. Um, again, it does so much. Like, it's beyond the tremolo. Like, um, at the moment, I've only got it set to a really high uh, tremolo because it goes with this one, which is the uh, Vena Cava filter by Intensive Care Audio. Uh -huh. Which is like, a, uh, it's, a, it's a filter machine, but it kind of self oscillates. So I'll put it on now, and then with that, and then with this pedal, and this one, and this one, and it's the end of Rock Rider. So then you put it on. So. How much joy does this stuff bring you? Oh, loads. <laughs> Just loads. Uh, like, when, when you're messing around with it in a room, I like, and it, this is where I'd say me and Brian differ because I, I, I can get, I'll get lost. I don't understand where, what, what's going on. I'll go over a sound so much that it's just no longer a sound anymore. Um, but when you play them live and it can be super loud and it's just absolutely pounding, I just, it feels amazing. Like, that's why I love it. Yeah. But yeah, this, this pedal is pretty special. This, uh, it's just a, a guy in London. I think he used to work for Range, Ranger FX. Hmm. And then started making his own. Pretty special. Do you want to hear on his yeah, own? Yeah, I was going to say, what, how would you classify this pedal? Oh, I mean... Bonkers? <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's the least you could say. Yeah. <laughs> Now, how are you using the, the Synth 9, the I'm EHX? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a question. It's literally finishing the chain. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, it would be gone. Yeah, there was a space in there. It was but... actually, it was a birthday present from the wizard who stood over there with his torch on his phone again, as always. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his light on. Um, and I, like, I, it, it was used for certain things in the writing of Beecher and Ballroom. Uh, for the stabs in the background, but for then crawler. when I recorded for Crawler, yeah. Um, but when when it was recorded, it wasn't needed. Um, it's again one of those things where in the room it all sounded right, but then when it got to the studio, it wasn't quite right, so it got it got dropped, and it's not really come back. And then yeah, the the only other the only other thing that's um, absolutely, absolutely crazy on here is this face bender. Yeah, let's hear that and how you're using that. Uh, well, I'm not really. I mean, they um, get given to you in a plastic bag in New York <laughs> by Oliver. Yeah, Oliver from Def Bowl oh, yeah. came to our show and he just went, Here, I have a gift for you. And it, was just a, it was a plastic bag for Chinese food. Yeah. <laughs> just take out this pedal. I was like, oh, fuck it, amazing, thank you. <laughs> uh, but it, I, it, I, I asked him what he does. And he said, he said, You decide. Mm -hmm. And I was like, OK. I was like, it's open to interpretation. It's, it's not out yet. I don't know when he's releasing it or what he's ever going to do with it. Well, shit, can we hear it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're, you're going to hear as much as, as I know about it as any, anyone else. Eh? Video game soundtrack from like the yeah. 90s. Yeah, I mean it's got. It, it actually has like just it's strange. It's a it sounds like a chorus pedal. Yeah, but it, it's Definitely got modulation. Yeah, yeah modulate. It's like a modulated delay chorus with some reverb qualities to it. I mean, who knows? We'll figure it out. I've been using it at the end of the set for certain things. When we when we do like a, a drone out at the end of a set, I just stick it on. It helps carry signal. And that's as far as I've got with it so far. Shit. Mm -hmm. Excited to hear what you come up with <laughs> on it. And uh, I, I mean, we want to make time short here and talk to Mark, but I, I do want to ask you as we get out of here on this is, do you look for weird pedals? And now because you're starting to have maybe a possible reputation of having, you know, an affinity for noises, uh, are you people reaching out to you with weird pedals or weird ideas? Like, how do you get yourself into some of these pedals that are so um. zany? I don't know. Uh, we're always looking for new pedals, all the time. Um, so it's a constant search. Yeah, on, on like old tours, we used to we used to go yeah. to like every sure. shop possible and try try out pedals. Um, and not recently, obviously, with the pandemic and everything, there's been a lot less of that. It's been a lot more YouTubing. Yeah. Um, but again, you I've also put a banner on you buying it. Yeah, I, so I, I have not to buy it for the <laughs> I have a, we have a schematic for the new board, so I'm not allowed to add anything, but then Oliver came with this, so. Yep, thanks Oliver. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, every, everything's kind of um, slimlined. It's all gonna get tucked away. Loads of this stuff's gonna go underneath the, the top ridge and you're not gonna see it because they never get touched, the dials and stuff. But as for weird stuff, yeah, always looking for weird stuff, but sometimes it just goes wrong, you know? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. um, there's been a few pedals that I've got, like the the bit command, yeah, bit, bit commander. commander from EQ. Yeah, I, I, it didn't. I didn't know what to do with it. Um, there's a couple more that I've had from Earthquake devices, like the Arpeggiator, and um, no, well, yeah, was that the Arpenoid? Yeah. I mean, I haven't got a clue what to do with that. Like, I just don't. So, and it's always that thing, you know. You can watch demos all you want. But until you try it with your stuff, you have no idea if it's actually going to be any good. Yeah, or your music or the style of music you're playing. Yeah, what's exactly. in front of it, what's behind it. Exactly. That's also another reason why I want a switching system, because Gavin built this in. Um, it's basically a little section that you can plug a pedal into. 
so it goes into the chain. Yeah. So I could know whether I liked it or not. Okay. Um, how That's many handy. times have we used it? None. That's right. <laughs> Zero. Because but it's there. Just, yeah, it's there. Because we generally just rip the pedal off that yeah, we don't want anymore and put the new one in and yeah. go, right? Because this, this here, two, three, however many days ago, four days ago, was a... Nano Holy Grail. Yes. Uh, Holy Grail. Um, and it was a pre-reverb. Yeah, they so could run it into your drives yeah, and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So this this order doesn't make any sense. Just so you know, like that is not the order of the pedal board. Sometimes this way, sometimes up, sometimes down, and then back along that. Yeah. Way. Does this keep you up at night, Kevin? No, no, no. It works. <laughs> <laughs> For now, <laughs> it does work. It, has, it, it actually always it works. I feel yeah. like maybe the next time you guys come to the states, you will have a rack of all your pedals, and Gavin will be doing the switches for you. No, no. I've not got enough hands. <laughs> we need two Gavins. Yeah, you need another me. We're yeah. going to clone Gavin. Yeah, we're going to clone me. Well, and then we'll have, uh, we'll have Gavin doing that, and Gavin here doing this. Perfect. Yeah, game on. Sick. Two Gavins. Boom. That's Better the than one Gavin. Let's talk to Mark. Yeah. yeah. All right, other side of the stage. The gear goodness does not stop with Mark Bowen. Mark, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, good, and, and we're also joined by Gavin again. Hello, <laughs> good to be back. Cheerful as always. Now, guitar, I know you as a stinky guy, the 72 Strat, but yeah. we'll get there. Tell me about this one, this beautiful, uh, this just cleaned guitar. It's my EGC 5500, I can't remember the exact number. Um, but yeah, I got it, our sound engineer, Waze, he started espousing the virtues, I'm actually using his guitar as a second on, on this, but he started espousing the virtues of EGCs, so I got really into them. It's like the hottest pickups you can possibly have, like yeah. they wind them and they just don't stop winding them. <laughs> um, and then the aluminium neck, I don't know, it, it just, if I go back to any of the other instruments, they just, they sound like guitars and like, I don't know if you can see, but like, I'm kind of interested in not sounding that much like a guitar. Yes. Um, but when it needs to, you know, you still got your, your rock sound, but it can really just blow things into a different stratosphere. Now, uh, I'm not familiar with their pickups that they wind. Are they specific? Like, uh, is it anything you asked for? Did you say you wanted the harder pickups? It's, it's, it's just, just what it's, it is. It's their their single coil pickup. I think it's loosely based around Travis Bean. I know a lot of their stuff okay. kind of is vaguely, um, but yeah, it's just loud, much louder, and much more like there seems to be a higher kind of frequency bandwidth going on. Um, and yeah, yeah. The output on them is insane. And the isn't it? the output is pretty crazy. Um, so it's just yeah, more. More and is more. <laughs> and how do you, how does it feel to play like aluminum neck versus a wooden neck? Because I've never played an aluminum. I mean, like this is a very heavy guitar. Yeah. But Jesus I mean, that's Mark. mainly down to the like these the ones are. This one's the aluminum body. It's a lot lighter. Yeah. Um, but oh, it's yeah. a little bit more imbalanced, so it's kind of like heavier that direction. Um, yeah, so it, it's a steep learning curve. Yeah. I've, I've got bigger quads since, uh, <laughs> since starting this process, but um, it just, it, it sounds so much better. Like I was a bit worried about playing live because we're quite like rambunctious live, let's yes. say. Um, so put it lightly. And I was, I was worried it was going to weigh me down, but it, it, it just sounds so good. It, you can't kind of leave it, do you know what I mean? It has, yeah. to be, it has to be this one. Like whenever we started back after COVID, Stinky got more of a look in because I was a bit nervous and I really wanted to kind of make sure I could swing and dance around. But yeah. It, it's not that bad, you get used to it. Now, is this, like for strings, you're, uh, Lee was telling us that you guys both play heavy, but you play 12s or 13s. Uh, mammoth, slinky, okay. mammoth. Yeah. So. Has that always been the case, or you kind of worked up I've, that? I've just been working my way up. I, I, do, I do a lot of tram picking, so the kind of the the more I've got to grip with with yeah. the tram, I I just keep going up. And I know that uh, what's he called, Dick Dale, he was playing like something ridiculous, like twenty threes and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. And he does a lot of tram picking, so I'm like, okay, that makes logical sense. Um, yeah, and I just I don't know, I break a lot of strings as well, so I feel like. Thicker, sensibly would make sense yeah. that you're yeah. going to break them less, but uh, <laughs> they just snap harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but it, it, I don't know. It just feels right to me to kind of have a, a rope under your finger. Yeah. And for switching guitars, is it when a string breaks or goes out of tune, or do you have specific songs that you use these? Uh, I mean, well, so that, that that one's a baritone. Okay. Um, that's the EGC baritone uh, that Dom from uh, Mogwise lent me. Yep. Um, 
on that. I mean, I think these pickups are crazy. Like they're uh, yeah, that's they're, another level. Yeah, <laughs> those ones. It's, it's pretty that's terrifying. Um, but yeah, so I mean, obviously baritone scale stuff. I'm doing that. Um, Wizzes seems to be a little bit Something brighter. Better. Okay. Um, so I use that on a lot of like the older stuff, so like Brutalism, Joy era stuff. I'm tending Ooh. to prefer. And not Stinky, because I'm sure you recorded with that for that stuff. Sometimes Stinky That's makes an appearance. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's, it's the output, like I'll, I'll show you the difference. It's kind of, the other thing is like, stink, Stinky's like. Yeah, if you touch it, it goes a semitone sharp. You look at it the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a, I mean, look at the state of it. Like, it's just, you know, like, uh, the action's mental. We can't get that to go any lower. No, it's fused. This is all fused. The skunk stripe uh, is loose, so it, it, like, resonates certain frequencies, so you feel vibrations in your hands. you got to play that thing like it owes you money, man. It's good. Yeah, it's a high action. That, that's all disappearing. <laughs> Lee broke it in two, one show. Um, I mean, I love it. And your dad's guitar, so right? I don't know yeah, if people yeah, watching yeah. don't know that. But. Yeah, so it, it, it was my dad's, like, way back when. And when you get sweaty, it this turns into a sponge. You yeah, can, you oh, can wow. literally just pull it away. But so. like you know, it's still on. It's on every single Idol's album, including mm -hmm. Crawler. Yeah, 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 we and will be. And like, I, I, it's it's a sick guitar, but you know, it, I, I've I've now I've treated it with such disrespect that I now I kind of have to treat it with a little bit of respect because yeah. it, it is literally going to fall into pe yeah. break into pieces. But I use it to warm up, and it it. it, it it sometimes works this way in the shows. It kind of depends yeah. on what I'm feeling. Also, if I'm going into the crowd, I won't kill anyone. That's whereas that almost yeah. certainly Ooh. will. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah he's weaponized themselves yeah, with so his this, is, this is my. You need a permit to carry <laughs> yeah, thing. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, that takes us to amps. I feel like so. Yeah. I've normally seen you with like two high watt stacks. Now you got the orange. So tell me about that change on that. Um, and that's a bass amp, right? Yeah. yeah so whenever I was in the studio recording Crawler. We um, kind of worked on lots of sort of different variations of tone, and like gradually as each album has been going on, I've been like filling in more and more of the low end, doing a lot more of the bass like synth stuff. Yeah. Um, so bass amps kind of been where I've been headed, and Gavin's kind of just been guiding me down certain certain routes, and they, we we got the AD two hundred shipped in, and we actually had one of those but with a, a micro t so it's a model t preamp okay um and I've, I've been using model t's recording uh sun model t sorry don't know if it, i don't know why in depth <laughs> yeah, i gotta yeah. go with this but so i was using that as the as the preamp for this and that was like that that was my go-to kind of like heavy sound for crawler um and i've just started taking them on the road as well i kind of i like how the two interact with each other okay yeah. um and I've blown up a lot of high watts, so uh, yeah, I, bl yeah. I blow up a lot. Yeah. yeah, I seem to be the only person that does it. Sex on this tour, or so yeah, far? sex on this tour. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's not. I, it, it's definitely me. I like. I don't know what it is, but yeah. So I've, I've kind of got the two. I just. I love. I love the, the sound of high watts. Like I'm never not going to play a high yeah. watt. They're like. Th there's this like weight, and and thunk, that's there and they're bright and the headroom is the insane there's nothing else that's got headroom like it and i like we need loads of headroom so yeah um yeah so they're, they're the two one by 15 two by 12. okay um i was doing doing a two by 15 yeah. and a four by 12 but um we were playing a lot smaller shows in the uk and so we went to the smaller rigs and actually they're just a little bit more concise hmm. especially yeah. on the, the the one by 15 is way more yes. concise than the two by 15 you it's just a lot it's a lot clearer what we're trying to do with the sound Got it. um and wiz prefers it so wiz gets his say yeah. kind of he's the boss he's he's in charge the, gavin's in charge wiz is in charge and i just gavin's like your sonic shame, shaman yeah. yeah guiding you yeah yeah be. especially with all this stuff and before we'll keep uh, guitars and amps at, uh, we'll put them to rest but i wanted to ask about the music caster i know that for a while there you used a music caster on tour yeah and yeah i don't yeah. see that here is that gotten replaced with the, the that, that's that, that that's basically just down to shipping okay like um, what we can freight over um that i I've, I've done something weird with that for crawler so i've got the two pickups and then it, it's the volume either side and i kind of use that more as a studio guitar now because 
again, you know, jumping around on stage, I'm going yeah. to do all sorts of weird things where there's knob buttons that will just end up sounding like crap. So, um, yeah. And also, these are just sick. Yeah, dude. It's just this. It's a statement piece. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it draws your attention to it immediately when you come yeah. on stage with it, I bet. Yeah. And, uh, but it's the way that it sounds as well is incomparable. I well, let's it. get into that. Where should we start, whether it's this station or this station? Well, I think over here is like, this is like my main... Yeah, this is the hub. So yeah, like this one's kind of like my main board. It, it, it's almost like this is where we left off with Ultra Mono. Okay. It's pretty much the, the, the same board where I was at, except now it's got the Gig Rig G3 on it. Making me um, uh, jealous with that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> honestly, it is, it's completely changed the game. Um, like live shows are completely different. You've got way more scope to do what you would have done on recording. You've got way more scope to add like inflections and things like that you know there's like uh i don't have one on here where i've got a hidden preset divide so like i've got hidden presets so like i can put the pog in on certain bits just for like inflections and stuff like that um do you have it set up kind of like a, a, just an easier pedal board to manage or is it set up like you have patches for each song yeah it's, um, song, song based, based yeah, okay. yeah and song based yeah verse, bridge chorus middle eight, outro okay yeah and then as times progress, we kind of added hidden presets and yeah. extra presets <laughs> and presets. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah it's cool. It's just like little things so you can like, you know, if you eggs. want to make a bit more noise, you can <laughs> just randomly. <laughs> um, well, show us how you use some of this stuff. Uh, okay, so like Divide and Conquer, I've got, sorry. Um, so that, uh, I'm trying to think of what good stuff is on the G3. Uh, war, it's just cool, so like I can go from like, War's a good example. So I can go from having yeah, like that lots, got a lot of crazy yeah. stuff in lots it. of pedals on, so it's like... Uh, war from the new one, Car Crash. Yeah, Crawler. so War, well, Car Crash is mainly that one. So like, I can go from having lots of, so I've got like the Red Panda Raster, the Particle, uh, a pog, some ring modulation going on, and so that's like the intro to the songs doing all this like. Just cut, and then I'm back in the. It's really hard to do this so loud, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can just cut. I can, I can go from. Whereas before I'd always be like trying to scramble around, do like three pedals at once. Yeah. Now it's just like yep. it does it for me and it just means I can dance more, which is... And on like, that preset, we've left, loves. The, we've left the tails in between each yeah. so the reverb tra trails over. Reverbs once. trail across, delays trail across. There's some of the new stuff I've got where like the delay will trail across and then some of the like feedback can trail across as well. It's cool. Yeah. It's re I mean, it, it's really clever. Like they've, they've thought of so much like stuff that especially people with lots of pedals would really want out of it you know there's pre-game post-game the trails now but, did you set this up Gavin yeah, or the guys did and oh yeah and then i don't know if the pedal guys did that and parallel has yeah. been pretty sick so like um that's really useful for a lot of like ultra mono stuff because i did a lot of baritone stuff as well as playing normal guitar mm -hmm. so i can set up the pog and have one of the amps playing what would have been a baritone part and then another amp playing the normal guitar part, so it sounds like I've got two guitars yeah. going at once, and you can you know add different effects to each of those and then link them back up again. It's I mean it's so clever. It's like a creative cheat sheet, being able to get to those sounds so quick that allows you to kind of take from your yeah. hand to the hand, yeah, ha head to your hands and, yeah. and make it happen. It's it, it is cool. Honestly, it's like we got to the end of Crawler, and there's a lot going on there. It's a very dense effects guitars and a lot of stuff from my end there's a lot a lot of my guitar going on and it was like how the hell are we going to get this to transfer across into live me and gavin had lots of whatsapp messages explaining what each song was kind of doing and then we kind of went about it like what well, gavin kind of went about yeah, it all on theory yeah just all on theory basically to we thought it would work and then we got allowed to build it yeah and then I delivered it and then you were a month trying to work out how to it's, make it happen. Yeah, yeah, it's taken a while. There's a lot of like, all right. And, but then there's like some bits where you're like, 
oh my god, I didn't know I could do that. I've just saved yeah. myself like three steps. Yeah. And so it, it, it's just clever. It's very intuitive and very. It's. It, I mean, it's unreal. Yeah. It's definitely doing things that I, I've not seen anyone do before. I mean, there, like, you, there's cars that park themselves, so you know the, the way that this <laughs> this thing works yeah, doesn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah. You know, cool. much as it does. And it, it means also that again, I've still got lots of time to dance around while doing lots. Well, it does all the complicated stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It does all the math, yeah. the zeros and ones. Exactly. Yeah. Now, what are you, you kind of touched on the, the Red Panda stuff. What are you using or how are you using the Death by Audio stuff on the left side of the board there? Because so, that stuff's pretty zany. I mean, the, the, the Death by Audio stuff, that's kind of like the Echo Dream's my main delay. Okay. Um, the Reverberation Machine is my only reverb, I think. Yeah, it is. Um, and then the Waveform Destroyer. Can we hear that? Because that yeah, just sounds yeah. fun. Uh, what what f songs that in? The Waveform. <laughs> so like, uh, never find mine with the perm is. So yeah. It's like, it's just spluttery madness. That's bonkers. Um, the filter on it is crazy. Um, they said don't turn it up to 10, which I kind of saw as some kind of wager or bet. So I was say, I like a challenge set. almost. Yeah, so I was set to 10. It's probably why I keep blowing up high water. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so it's like, that. that's, that's probably my main fuzz spluttery distortion. Okay. And then, I've got the oh, got Acapulco good... Gold underneath. Oh, so these are my like never moves are on all the time. So the Super Duper uh, is on and all the time. The front end. That's Haunting, the end. Haunting, yeah. The Haunting Mids is on all the time. That's at the end, right? Isn't no, it? That's at the start. The start as yeah, well. Yeah, so the input in. And then the Acapulco Gold. I've just I find that one sweet spot that does lots. Uh, so on the song Love Song. Um, it does lots of really good like harmonic feedback and I can kind of get octaves up and octaves down and stuff like that with that. Um, the Dream Reaper is relatively new. Um, yeah, what's that? It's, it's, it's cool, it's like, I use it, the, I really like the filter on it and the fact that I can move it around. So like I, I use it for really like super trebly um, distortion stuff. Uh, and then also for feedback stuff, you can really go on a bit of a journey. Um, the, the, the Mugerfug delay, I mainly use for the boost section. Okay. It's just, again, it, or the drive, it's got like, it's just got a really nice analog drive that's not like overdrive, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, like I, 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 I tend to go for extreme pedals. So like, if I, I never really look at those kind of like nice overdrives. So this affords me that, and then it's also a really like if I need a beautiful delay, I've got a beautiful. Kind of like an old Echoplex. I know people do that. Yeah. Even MXR made that separate pedal, with just the preamp on it. Yeah. For that boost function. Yeah. I I used to have that, but it's made its way off the board. Um, and then this is another reason why I keep blowing up amps. Yeah. Uh, so. It's a the 4MS noise swash. It's kind of like it's actually a Eurorack device that they made into a pedal. Okay. It's insane. It's insane. It kind of... Uh, it's hard to describe. It, let me maybe we up. should just hear it. It's basically like a, a very high gain I'm, I'm, square I'm wave. I, I'm genuinely worried about blowing up my pedal for turning it on. <laughs> but let's see, let's go. <laughs> right, so... You can hear it already. Yeah. Let's turn loop four off. It's actually sounding very quiet. That's you scary. Might, you might it's be a loop or nothing. Yeah. Yeah, let's not blow my pedal out of my arms. No, we don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, so I, I use that on uh, a couple of songs from Ultra Mono, um, and I've yeah blown up lots of amps. Yeah, it's just like the loudest. Mark, you got a problem. Square wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, it, it, the thing is, it, it, yeah, it does these mad square wave filter sweeps and all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, blows amps up. Flames came out of a few of your amps a few Jesus. months ago. Yeah, yeah, don't do that today. I'm the closest one to the amp. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. I'm the first. One. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so and that that now I kind of we're not really playing a lot of the stuff from Ultra Mono that uses that. So that'll just be like when we go into experiment mode or kind of like you know thrashing about at the end of the set that yeah. can get chucked in occasionally. Um, but yeah, so that's that pedal board. And then the yeah, what's the one down there? I see it says 
So I've got the ghost. The two red panda pedals. I've got the red panda raster and the particle. Um, there, that's for like the intro to grinds. Is using the raster. Uh, I use the particle and grinds as well. I just I really like that the raster for the like shifting delays that you can do with it, and you can really like get down into very low frequencies and really super high frequencies. So yeah. You can make people uh, stand back. And then the the particle, I just love the the granular pitch shifting delays. Um, there's a song on Crawler that is written entirely based on one setting that I find on that. Which one's that? Uh, so know. Is it oh, a song called record? Progress. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's just me playing like a sweet acoustic guitar kind of like finger picking song, and it's go <laughs> and goes all over the place. Notes are going everywhere. Um, and they're just like I, I really like. They're very like creatively inspiring pedals. Like you can just kind of you can go on it and just find a spot and you know you can play smoke on the water through it and then all of a sudden you got a new song do you know what i mean yeah. so it's like they're they're really cool pedals they're definitely pushing the boundaries i like i like as you see i like pretty extreme pedals so death by audio is my f shit up that should be uh, like your nickname yeah i know that's ollie and his you know his his name and his company but man yeah with the stories you're telling us about these amps going on fire, I feel like that's your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, learned, I learned from the best, all, all of his friends. So yeah, um, so yeah, that's that, that's that pedal. Right. And, then, and then you know, hidden within all that is the you know, the stuff from Brutalism, which is just very straightforward, yeah. kind of like almost rockabilly, punk rocky type stuff. Yeah. Um, and you play your pog pretty much like an instrument, don't you? Pog, pog is all the time. Uh, yeah, but I, I got really obsessed with the filter on the pog. Yeah, I, I need him around all the time. The time the star, absolutely. That's why he's a shaman. I don't know what I don't know what I'm doing. I just go on and put my fingers in the, on the dots. <laughs> um, where is that song? Rains. So rains. I'm using the filter. Um, is this going to play? Have we blown up an amp? <laughs> oh boy, I think that made air, folks. We might have done. Mm. Yeah. Let's see. I think we got there one we there. Go. We've actually managed to do it. We have the camera. There nope. we go. Sorry, we're back in action, we're guys. We're back. <laughs> we're back, folks. No amps are dead yet. No amps are dead yet. Uh, I'm just really where it's really loud, sorry. Um, so, range is the pog, and I'm going through like the uh, filter sweep on it, so it's like. And it just builds and builds. Yeah. Um, my legs are still shaking. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Like it's still a lot of movement. Yeah, I'm, I'm really into the, the, the low end. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that, that's that vibe. I use the Pog pretty much on every song. Yeah. Like it helps it helps me get to parts of the guitar that I'm, as not being not a very good guitar player, I'm not good at getting to, so it kind of helps me along the way. Yeah. Well, should we move over to this little station? Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, Mark, this is another station for you to make noise. So walk us through what's going on here and what you're using. So this is kind of like, uh, this This came out of lockdown. So riding crawler on my own in my bedroom and just collecting pedals and like gradually splicing that all together. And it meant that in the studio, there was lots of various different kind of iterations of what this pedal board was. Um, and there was, you know, uh, different loop orders, different everything like that. And it was kind of, it was how we were going to get that to come across on something that was coherent live. Yeah. And also, there's there's quite a significant amount of looping going on on the new album, uh, and stuff that can't necessarily be created with the pedals live. Like it's got to be, you know, it's certain feedbacks and things like that. Um, so we've got lots of loops going on. And then it's like then running through this kind of like vaguely modular thing that's going on with the Mooger Fugers. So there I've got like them talking to each other with certain patches and then I've got the <laughs> CP251. At the minute there's so, sort of simple patches going on because we're, uh, we're only playing Car Crash Live, we're not playing 
some of the more intricate stuff from Crawler yet. Okay. Uh, we've we've only done that once in a live session. It was like the most nerve wracking thing in the world. Oh, like, yeah, both, of us, to, both of us were. Yeah, there, we're like. But it's that thing as well, so it's like, you know, you're setting up loops, so you're playing a different part of the song to everyone else, you're doing things with your feet. And then, like, you know, everyone will be, like, three minutes into a song, and you're like, they're like, it sounds great. You're like, no, 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 it's going to fall apart in five, four. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes everywhere. So, yeah, it's, it's a... It's a it's a nerve-wracking thing to use, but... <laughs> is this your handiwork, Gavin, yeah, again? Indeed, okay. yeah. Again, this was like me going, oh, I used this, and then I went into that, and I needed to go parallel to this and back through this. Yeah. So, really, like, frustrating stuff, but he yeah. just... We added another gig, gig rig G3 at the bottom. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, lots of expression outputs. Lots of expression. The expression's going to the CP251 as well, which is sending yeah. stuff. We got the POG modded, so we oh, got yeah, filter sick. expression input on the POG. So oh yeah, yeah, down here you got yeah, that. Yeah, so it. the I can sweep the whamp, whamp the of the of the POG. Um, so yeah, so like I'll I'll kind of show you how it works. So like and uh, your guitar, other pedal board splits. Yes, it feeds that and feeds so, that as well. Okay, so you're running into yeah. it. Yeah, okay. and, um, and then it goes into two stratum and iridiums underneath, which goes straight to DI. There they are there. And then so because he wanted more amps, and uh, I said no, <laughs> <laughs> so I gave him them. Play with these for a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then we've got the timeline. I was using the Moog delay, um, but. That's a prohibitively expensive thing to tour with. If you break a yeah. Moog, they don't make them anymore, so they're like 1800 bucks or yeah. something like that. So this does everything that yeah. the Moog does and is a little bit more controllable. You can kind of see where you're at tempo-wise and things like that. It's definitely more malleable in that, in that respect. Um, uh, this thing, this is a, an electro-lobotomy particle smasher. That is a from, wonderful name. Yes, yeah, good, isn't it? It doesn't have an on-off switch. It doesn't have an on-off. It's on all the time, which is why the gig rig comes in handy. So the, the, that's it there. Just it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it, it's got two oscillators on it, um, and then a load of stuff. It actually it actually takes guitars quite well. Like it responds quite well to guitars. But I I, I just use it as kind of like the two oscillators on it as the okay. main kind of. It also doesn't have any Focal labels point. on it. So yeah, yeah, that, yeah, you kind of, it's just a, a free-for-all. Like, yeah, 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 it's a bit like, you know, like circuit bending and things like that. It's kind of that kind of vibe. You yeah. kind of just, you're going, so you and find again, something you like. You yeah. just keep turning knobs and hitting switches until you find something you like. Or exactly, usable. yeah, and then you very quickly hit the loop and record it and keep it for posterity thereafter, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so like, uh, uh, for example, car crash, I've got, I've got the loops for car crash set up because it's impossible to recreate on that. So yeah. like I've got the, the intro. And then you know, the other bits. Now, um, with some then, of these pedals being so kind of unpredictable in their nature, is it, it's probably equally inspiring but also frustrating when you do find a sound because it's hard to probably reproduce that. Yes. To get yeah. it to go. Even though it's set at the same dials, same settings, it makes a different noise. Yeah, yeah. I've learned very quickly that anytime I'm sat down to write or like think about something in rehearsal, I've got my DAW recording everything that I do. Just go. Because there's often you find something sick and you're like, I have no idea how to recreate that. <laughs> but at the very least, you, you can hear the sound or, you know, sometimes we've even videoed us doing stuff because then you're like, oh, that's what I did there. Yeah. Um, which is useful. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it can be. But that, again, that's the thing. Gavin's taken my inability to recreate anything and has transferred it into something that we can, we can give people at least a very fail-safe version of Car Crash, and then I can kind of branch out. So like Car Crash at the minute, I've got that, so the, and then, and then I can switch using the G3 to the Particle Smasher. And then I can switch back to it. So like what I'm finding is as we've been playing it, I'm growing in confidence and moving away from the loop and more onto the particle smasher itself. But then I've got, so I've got like all this comes in. So like, uh, we'll get later in the song. 
in, so I'll bring the, the ring one kind of comes in. And you're bringing with the foot. And then you can like patch it up. Until it sounds like absolutely nothing, but yeah. So it, it, it's it's an adventurous thing. It's it's fun. Um, Keep and then, on his toes. Yeah. And yeah. Then the guitar goes. But, we, but, but the, the 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 beauty of the way we've worked it out is we've always got fail safe. So like, you know, it can just end up. We can just end up back somewhere safe. That sounds normal ish. Um, and then it takes guitars really well. So like. Uh, we then cut to a bit on car crash that's a bit like, I don't know, like a, a grunge middle eight or something like that. Um, so we've got the... And then, you know, it's just like a normal guitar and then I've got it going through the freak box. Probably not gonna be able to hear that over the amps, yeah. but it's coming through the wedges. I don't know. Maybe we'll put Turn these off. Yeah. Is there things that it does weird like uh turn these back on? Let me see. Hold on, where's this going? <laughs> I can this see you get thing. lost in it's, yeah. it's, it's, There's lots of like rooting, you gotta work out where you are. You need uh, a road map for this thing. Yeah. It's got that coming through, and then I can go back and stick like Of yeah, that coupled with the amps out front, so you've got the DI lines, and then you've got yeah. the feel like straight an coming alien through. takeover. Yeah, yeah, you can <laughs> make <laughs> all sorts of hell take take place. But like, it's cool because then you can got you can do like real subtle things where you've got the amps kind of just playing something straight, and then you can really kind of like bring like a ring mall kind of like really slowly like rising up, and it gives you that. You know, it's out. all stuff that you would do in production, but we're able to do it on stage, yeah. analog and live. Yeah, it's, it's cool. terrifying. But, yeah, uh, it's also brilliant. And uh, I, you I can also tell that we like also kind of don't know what we're doing as well at the same time. Yeah. Well, that's I the beauty. Don't anyway. Just so, go yeah. for it. It's, well, it didn't come with a manual. No. <laughs> so we're currently writing. No, it. I don't think life does. So let's no, just go for it, definitely. boys. Definitely. Well, I think we're cutting into your sound check time, and uh, we're getting some eyes, so I, it's time to leave. But I want you to get a plug for your and Lee's show, for you guys on YouTube, you guys have a pedal show. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, so we, we do. So coming up with all this stuff, we, we started talking about pedals a lot more and each other. And uh, yeah, we started doing the show Ganks, which is just us kind of like taking the piss out of each other and how in the gear we are. Um, so yeah, it, we just we do that on YouTube every so often. We'll have like guests on, and we just kind of, take a lighthearted approach to gear and you know not take it too seriously because like even though you know we're really into it it's like it's, still it's supposed to be fun yeah you know I, I like I like the fact that we mess up a lot and I like the fact that we kind of don't know what we're doing that's kind of that's fun it's the charm in it yeah yeah Gavin Mark thank you guys he thank knows what he's there. doing though <laughs> well he's a real pro yeah 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 everyone have a good time stay safe keep rocking